Well, hi everyone, Chef Ron Locke here, and we are just about ready to start this week's episode of the Chef Ron Locke Show. But before we do that, I wanted to let everybody know out there, I am so excited to be bringing back this week on the show, Grandma Flo. That's right, Florence Mae Johnson's bring, coming back to the Chef Ron Locke Show to bring her southern wit and humor with her and introduce this week's recipe along with the ingredients. So I am sure we're going to have a great show here with her on board. After her, I will go ahead and show you how to put everything together and at the very end we'll do a final presentation that I am hoping that you enjoy. So with that, we have a mailbag segment for you coming up as well along with some other goodies. Now, I hope we leave you with our three E's that I like to leave you with on every episode. A little bit of entertainment, a little bit of education, and a little bit of enlightenment. So with that, I need to start heating up the kitchen, and we need to start getting on with the show. So let's start with the Chef Ron Locke Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Florence Mae Johnson, Grandma Flo. Well, howdy everyone, it's Grandma Flo, Florence Mae Johnson. How y'all doing? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, oh. Thank you, folks. Oh, you folks are too kind. Stop now. No, I mean stop. Come on, stop, 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 stop. We got, we got a show to do here. We only got so much time, but I, I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Grandma Flo here, Florence Mae Johnson. Just want to say hey, everyone. I'm so glad to be on another episode of the Chef Ron Locke Show. We have a great recipe that we got lined up for you here, but before we do that, I've got to tell you what happened to me. I just flew in this morning from Wisconsin at our farm, my husband and I. And we, I, I don't like to fly. I normally don't fly. I, I like to drive. I'm not a flyer. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm an old lady, so I, I, I prefer to use it. I like my wheels on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so it's a lot faster flying, and we need to be down here. So anyway, so we took this flight, and oh my Lord, we got about halfway into the flight, and all of a sudden, the fl it just started going up and down, up and down, up and down, and then all of a sudden it went, and it just bumped, and it hit my head right on the luggage thing above me. Oh my lord, they said it was turbulence. I don't know, I've never been in any sort of a situation like that. I've only flown maybe three or four times in my life, but let me tell you something. Oh, Lord, it was horrible. Luggage was flying all over the place. People were screaming to high heaven. I was holding on to my husband, Harry, Harry's hand, going, Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to die. I thought right there I was going to die. The plane was going down like this, and you're kind of, Oh, my Lord, if you didn't get your seatbelt on, you'd be probably falling into the next person's seat ahead of you. It was scary. It did stop, though. It came around and all that stuff, and they were picking up the luggage, and they came over to me, and they said, Excuse me, ma'am, do you need any help? And I said, Hell no, no, I need a drink. I said, you give me a gin and tonic right now, right pronto. I didn't care if it was 10.30 in the morning. I mean, come on. That was scary now. Give a grandma a ticker attack. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. But anyway... So your poor grandma almost didn't make it on the show today. Listen here. So anyway, that's what happened to me coming down. I've already had my excitement. So let's just hope everything goes well on, on this episode here, you know? So, all right. Well, I just thought I'd share that little story with you real quick. And I suppose we should get on with the ingredients here and letting you know what we're going to make for you. Well, Chef Ron's going to put together for you a fantastic pecan pie brownie. 
Yeah, that's right. Pecan pie brownie is what we're going to be making for you, or as the Yankees call it, pecan pie. And I tell you, I've made this myself. It is wonderful. Now, you can make this two different ways. You can either do it in an 8 by 8 dish, a square dish, and you can do them up as brownies, or you can just do it in a pie crust, and that's how Chef Ron's going to do it for you as well. All right. Well, let's get over to these ingredients and tell you what's all going into it. And oh my lord, look at the ingredients we've got going on here. Yo, Chef Ron, you had me on on that debut episode of yours and we did that Mexican casserole, that Mexican beef casserole thing. You had probably 15 ingredients. What are you trying to do here? Kill me with all this? Look, I'm a grandma. I can't remember all this stuff. I'm old. Be nice to your grandma. I've seen you give some easy ones to some of your other guests and cast members on the show. You need to be kind to your sweet grandma. You remember that now. All right, let's see if I can do this. Now, you know, I just hit my head on that compartment, so I hope I can get this all done and right. Let's get started. What you don't see here is a pie shell that has been already pre-baked. All right, Chef Ron will tell you all about that in the next, ep in the next segment here, but it's, there's going to be a pie shell that's been already baked. So that's missing out of the ingredient segment here. Let's continue. We got here two cups of pecans that have been chopped up. We got here a half a cup of light corn syrup. We got here half a cup of light brown sugar. Half a cup of all-purpose flour. A full cup of white sugar. We've got here a quarter teaspoon of salt. Three quarters cup of cocoa. A half a cup or a stick of butter at room temperature. And lastly, we got two eggs with some, uh, I believe, a teaspoon of vanilla that's been whipped up in this bowl here for that. Now, we're also going to, we also have two eggs that will be going into another part of the ingredient. Ron, as Chef Ron will tell you all about that coming up, as well as some melted butter that's going to be used as well toward the end of the recipe. And Chef Ron, again, will tell you about all that. But Lord, we have enough ingredients right here. I don't think we could probably go through any more, and your poor grandma will probably have a heart attack right here on the spot. So, anyway, I'm telling you what, I need to get myself out of here. I need to actually go lay down. It has been a horrifying day so far, and I just want to make sure I get off of this show here before some catastrophe happens. You know what I'm saying out there? You ever have one of those Murphy Law days? Well, that's kind of what I'm dealing with, and I don't want to have any more going on. So, anyway... This is Florence May Johnson, Grandma Flo, saying to you folks out there, be good to yourself, be good to your loved ones, and be good to mankind. Because you know what? If you don't, it ain't nobody's fault but yours if the sun don't shine every day, all right? All right, folks, we'll see you again real soon. Take care now. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>— Chef Ron here. How's everyone doing out there today? Come on. There you go. Well, thank you. And thank you all for coming and checking out another episode of the Chef Ron Lock Show. Grandma Flo. <laughs> Colorful as always. Colorful as always. She always has a cute little story to tell. I love that woman very, very much. Thank you, Grandma Flo, for the introduction and also for introducing our recipe, which is, of course, going to be pecan pie brownies. And we're going to go ahead and show you right now how simple and easy that is going to be to make for you. Now, there's two different ways you can do the pecan pie brownies. You can either do them in an 8x8 casserole dish, which is a real simple way if you want to just do a basic brownie, or if you want to make it a little more fancy and, 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 and classic, you can go ahead and do it in a 9-inch pie crust. And that's exactly what we've got right here. We've got ourselves here a prepared 9-inch pie crust that we're waiting to go ahead and use here. Now the first thing you want to do with this recipe is you want to go ahead and prepare that per the instructions on the package, okay? Or if you're making your own by scratch, go ahead obviously and do your recipe up that way. But prepare and bake the shell before you actually use this recipe. It will certainly make the crust crispier and nicer because this is one of those recipes where it's going to be baked and then put in the refrigerator. So you want to make sure that you've got a nice 
nice crusty layer on the bottom of this pie to support this dessert that we're going to be making for you. If you don't want to use the pie crust again, certainly go ahead and use an 8x8 casserole dish with this particular recipe. Okay, so let's get started and we'll work on the ingredients and get heat and get things heating up in here. I'm so excited I can't talk. <laughs> now obviously every time I talk about this, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure our hands are clean and our environment, our kitchen environment is clean because you certainly don't want to have any cross-contamination of germs. Now let's go ahead and we're going to roll our sleeves up just a bit here and we're going to get down to work. We're going to start heating up this kitchen and keeping it short and simple because that's what we do here on the Chef Ron Lock Show, alright? So let's go ahead and do that, alright, there. I think we're good to go. All right, let's get started. Now, first thing you want to go ahead and do is go ahead and set your heat on medium hot, medium heat, medium heat, and get yourself a medium-sized saucepan, just like we have right here. Now, we're going to go ahead and get started by adding in our ingredients. Now, the first two ingredients we want to add to this recipe is our butter. Let's go ahead and do that. Ooh. And also, we're going to add in our cocoa as well with that. And you, what we want to do, what we really want to do here is we want to go ahead and make sure that we get this smooth. We want to go ahead and make sure the butter and the cocoa are nice and smooth. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. Okay, you can see now how nice and smooth that is. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and add in our sugar and then we're going to go ahead and add in our, van our two eggs and our vanilla that's mixed in to this bowl right here consolidating a little bit Okay, now we just what we want to do now is we just want to continue to stir this and we again want to get this very smooth. So we're just going to stir this until we get to a nice smooth consistency. As you can see, just like this. Okay, alrighty now. Now we've got two more ingredients before we go ahead and finish this. We've got our flour. Let's go ahead and add that in. And lastly, our salt. Okay, let's go ahead now and just stir the rest of this in. And all we really want to do is just incorporate this, all right? I'm going to go ahead right now, actually, and turn my heat down, just like that. And then we're just going to go ahead and incorporate this in. Okay. And that's what it should look like, just like that, just like that. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now, what we're going to do next, we're going to take our pecan pie mixture in our pan and put that into our pie shell here. We're going to do that right now for you. And all we're going to do is you just simply go ahead and spoon this in. Let's do it on this side so my camera can see this, just like this. Try to get it all if you can. It tends sometimes to be a little bit of butter, melted butter at the bottom that just somehow doesn't coagulate with everything right. So anyway, we're just going to go ahead and evenly spoon this out like this with our spoon. And then we're going to go ahead and just even this out a little bit with our spatula that we have here. Set this down. I'm sure someone's going to like that spoon. Just even this out. See how we're doing that? Now, if you haven't already done so, pretty sure you've preheated your oven to 325 degrees while you're doing this. There we go, just like that. Nice and smooth. You may need to turn this around a little bit so you can get all the sides. Now, if you notice, if you notice it's not all the way to the top, well, there's a reason for that, because we've got a nice topping 
our pecan topping that's going to be going on top of this chocolate goodness base that we have here in this pie. So now all we do is we simply go ahead and we're going to put this into our 325 degree oven. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and put that in for 20 to 25 minutes and you just want to kind of make sure it gets solid. So right at around probably the 25 minute point, we're going to go ahead and take this out and then we're going to go ahead and start making our fantastic topping to go on to this fantastic pecan pie brownie. So come on back, check it out. We've got some great things still ahead for you here on the Chef Ron Lock Show. On the next episode of the Chef Ron Lock Show, Howard Houseware stores, places like that, we sell them as well. So anyway, that are, that's the ingredients that are going to be going into our Fabu chocolate and peanut butter balls. And now, why do people have to laugh when you say balls? I just, I don't get it. I don't know. Maybe because a gay man says balls, people find it funny. Okay, balls, balls, balls. <laughs> So we anyway, are 17 today. No, we don't want to be. We, no, we don't. We don't want to be our 17. I, I, I want to keep this on the up and up today. So we're gonna definitely just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this once, and I want you all to just laugh, 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 and then we're gonna get all that laughter out of the way because I'm gonna be mentioning the word throughout this episode, and we all gotta just, you know, pull our pants up and just and just buckle down and just be and just be and just be serious about this. All right. So I'm gonna say this one. I'm gonna say this real quick. Balls, 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 balls. <laughs> well, Alright, now you've just seen our first stage of our pecan pie brownies. Now they've been completely cooled and now we're ready to make the topping that's going to be going on to these wonderful, wonderful brownies here. And that topping is just fantastic. If you like pecans, oh lord, you're going to love this. This is just great. Now let me go ahead and start this for you. It's really simple. We've got our bowl here. I've already added my corn syrup in the bowl here. We're just going to go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients. And we've got our eggs and our vanilla here. Let's go ahead and add that. and then. Next we have here our butter, our melted butter. Make sure that's melted. Add that in. Now we add in the dry ingredients. We've got our brown sugar. Let's go ahead and add that in. And lastly, we have our pecans. Our chopped pecans. And we'll add those in as well. Now I just prefer to use a, tea, a tablespoon here and I'm just going to go ahead and stir this up. This gets a little sticky with the corn syrup and everything but the eggs thin it out a little bit so it's not so bad and you can generally and you'll see the consistency of this in a second you can generally put this right on top of the pie it shouldn't be a big problem it should pour on nicely and you just spoon it over we'll show you how to do that here in just a second I just want to stir this up a little bit more just like that all right Okay, well all right, now that everything is mixed up, we're going to go ahead and put our topping on top of our pecan pie brownies. Now, we've got our pecan pie brownies right here. Now you've seen what I've done. I've gone ahead and I've made a little aluminum ring of tin foil around the crust top of the pie itself. Now the reason I do that is because I don't want this to get any darker than it already is. We already baked this for 25 minutes in the oven and it's gotten quite golden. Now I don't want to get it any more darker than that because we're going to be baking this for about another 40 minutes or so and if you don't protect the edges of this pie itself it's going to get awfully brown and almost to the black point so you, if, unless you like your pie really well done like that you want to go ahead and protect the upper part of the ring of the pie crust itself and you do that with either aluminum foil I've just taken pieces and put it around the pie. It's the easiest way to do it, really. They've got these newfangled things out there that sit over your pie uh, on the top of it itself. And uh, there's some other things that are out there, too, that you can do. But I just go the old-fashioned, simple way that my mom used to go ahead and do. And she would just take aluminum foil, pieces of it, and just wrap it around loosely on the crust itself. Now, you want to go ahead and do this before you put our topping on as well because it'll be a lot easier once this is baked to slip those out 
of the pecan topping than it will be if you put the pecan topping on first and then try to put the aluminum foil around it with that pecan topping. It's going to be a mess if you do it that way. So make sure you do it before you put the topping in. All right, just a little tip from Chef Ron Locke to you all out there. So let's go ahead and now we should just be able to go ahead and just pour this on top of the pie like so. You see how that works? Just like that. And then we'll evenly spread this out. I just want to make sure I get all the goodness in here. There we go. All right, like that. I'm going to take this back of my spoon and just very carefully even this out, like I said. Now, again, you want to be a little careful with these aluminum foil. See, now they don't want to stay. <laughs> The aluminum foil around the top, okay, and just kind of, you just maybe want to kind of hold it like this. You see how I'm kind of doing that? Just kind of hold on to the aluminum foil while you spread this out. Now this will also spread out in the oven when we bake it. Now that looks pretty good right there. Don't that look good? Do, does not, that, that looks so good, I'm telling you. I'm telling you what, mm, you can just smell it. You can smell the decadence right there. You've got this great chocolate bottom and this wonderful pecan top just waiting to bake and it is just going to be fantastic. So we're going to go ahead. We've got our oven preheated to 325 degrees. Now we're going to put this in the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. You want to check it around 35 minutes or so depending on the heat of your oven. What we really want to do here is get this just a nice golden brown and set. So I would say somewhere between 35 and 40 minutes ought to do the trick for you. Uh, I wouldn't leave it probably much more than in 40, uh, but like I said, start checking it probably around the 35 minute mark, all right? So we're going to go ahead and do that right now, but we'll, while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and do a little mail call, a little mail bag for you here. And we always do this every week. We got some viewer out there that wants to ask one of our ingredient guest stars a, a question or myself a question itself so we're going to go ahead right now and see who our viewer is and who gets the honors of mailbag's question of the week let's go find out Lillian Lampshire here from the luxurious lap of London and I am so pleased to be on this edition of Mailbag as a recipient of a question from one of our viewers out there. His name is Niall P and he lives in Toronto, Canada. Now Niall wants to know where is the most fabulous place I've ever traveled. Well, Nigel, that's a really hard question because I've been to so many places. I've been to almost virtually every place, every big city in the entire world. And, you know, probably the best city I can think of, other than the luxurious lap of London, of course, would be probably Sydney, Australia. Now, Sydney has this wonderful, fabulous opera center there. And I love opera, and they just have the most wonderful shows there. Their food is fabulous, the people are just marvelous, and there's just always a festival of something going on there that is just marvelous. Do parties all over the place. Oh my god, everybody loves Sydney. Sydney is just one of those cities that you just got to go to every every once in a lifetime you know and if you ever get the chance to go Nigel go to Sydney I guarantee you you will have a fabulous time the people are just wonderful uh, it's just a fun fun town and uh, I would highly recommend it alright so that's it that is where my most favorite place to go is is Sydney Australia all right then. Now, if you have a question out there that you want to ask myself or one of the other cast people on the show or Chef Ron, please feel free to email at crl at chefron.com. That's crl at chefron.com. In the subject heading, put 
mailbag. So Shafran knows that that is what you are intending to send and your question, of course. And if we choose one of your questions, or I should say if Shafran chooses one of your questions, then we will read it on the show in a future segment of Mailbag. So, anyway, Lily Limsha from the luxurious lap of London saying thank you all and we are going back now to the Chef Ron Lock Show. Don't that pecan pie brownie look simple and decadent? <laughs> that is one fantastic pie brownie that is right there and we just showed it to you there. That's the completion coming out of the refrigerator after cooling it. I cooled it off about five hours before serving that. And uh, the recipe says two hours. If you can let it go at least another couple hours after that, it'd be all the better for you. And then just let it sit out for about maybe 15, 20 minutes before you cut into it. Because it's gonna be a little hard when it comes out of the refrigerator because you've got that caramelization that's hardening up and the brownie inside that's kind of hardening up as well. So you kind of want to let it just uh, warm up just a little bit before you go ahead and slice into that or you might find a little bit of a problem with your knife going through that and you might also want to go ahead and run some hot water into your knife and get it nice and warm. That helps the cutting process as well. A little tip there for you. Alright, well we're going to go ahead and take a taste test of this pecan pie brownie that we've got sitting on our plate right here as you can see I'm telling you don't that look great look at the layering going on there you've got the the brownie middle there the center and then you've got this fantastic fantastic pecan topping that is just sitting there roofing that little uh, piece we got on this plate I'm telling you what I'm holding back here this is one of my favorite pies and I'm just waiting to dig into it. So let me go ahead. I got my fork and knife here. I'm gonna try doing this with a fork. Sometimes under the lights and everything here, it may be soft enough where I can take the fork. If not, we're gonna have to use that knife too. So let's see what we can do here. I'm just gonna take a little piece of it. Let's see, ah oh, yeah, I can get in there. All right. Well, actually, I'm gonna use my knife to prop that in. Let me go ahead and get a napkin here. A little less cleanup for the crew here. Let's take a test. Mm. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, the reason I'm holding back, because it's very rich. And it's very it's very rich and it's very fudgy. So I would also recommend that you have a glass of milk with this. If you're not a milk drinker, water or some other beverage, and you're gonna need it to help work its way down. Not that it's bad at all, that's actually good. This is a fantastic, fantastic pecan pie brownie. This brownie part is so fudgy. It's so fudgy and moist. If you like a really good fudgy brownie, let me tell you what, I think you can see right in the picture how how, how moist and glistening that is and fudgy that is. And the topping, that pecan pie topping just really pushes this over the top. It really does. I'm telling you what, if you want to impress your friends or family at a gathering or a potluck or whatever, go ahead and make this. I'm going to tell you what, just a secret between me and you, that will become your new signature dessert. Let me tell you. All right. That's it. There you go. The proof is in the brownie <laughs> in this case. So I want to thank Grandma Flo for coming onto the show and just giving another great presentation of our ingredients and just being her lovely, lovely self. I love that woman very much. And I want to thank each and every one of you, as I do every week, for coming and checking out the show. You know, without you, there really would be no purpose for me doing this. I'd be doing this to myself, quite frankly. So, you know, I, I really appreciate everybody that's really sent some great letters and some great feedback for the show and uh, and we, I just really appreciate all of your support I really do I hope you come back next week and check out our next recipe and our guest star ingredient present presentator <laughs> that brownie still going in my mouth <laughs> anyway this is chef Ron Locke with the chef Ron Locke show saying to y'all 
Let's keep it short and simple out there. And let's start heating up that kitchen. And we're going to see y'all next time. Y'all have a great day.